passengers on commercial flights in Europe are being given the chance to work, communicate and have fun as the internet finally reaches 10,000 meters. Until recently, Wi-Fi internet has only been available on certain long-haul routes, but now surfing the web and catching up with email is possible thanks to satellite technology. The same technology has helped simplify guidance systems to help aircraft land in zero visibility. Norway in early spring, and it's still cold this far north. Oslo is the second busiest Scandinavian airport after Copenhagen. About 19 million passengers passed through last year. It's the main hub for airlines operating in Norway, like Norwegian Air Shuttle, the low-cost carrier that operates around 60 Boeing 737s all over Europe. Norwegian is installing a high-speed in-flight Wi-Fi system across its whole fleet. We boarded a round trip to London to try it out. The internet service is available once the aircraft has climbed to an altitude of 3,000 meters. I've just sent an email to my office and I'm now waiting for the reply. In the meantime, we can surf the web to check out some internet sites. The surfing is just like the high-speed Wi-Fi service you find at home or in the office. Norwegian says that around half of the passengers log in on an average flight. Well, now I have the response to my email. Passengers can also make phone calls, even video calls, through the Wi-Fi internet. We're somewhere over the North Sea and I'm connected to the other end of Europe, a video call with Perugia in Italy. So how does the system work and how is it possible to stay connected at 10,000 meters? The airline's communications boffin explained more. On top of the aircraft, on top of the fuselage, we have, uh, there's, a, there's an antenna that's mounted. And on top of the antenna, there's an oval-shaped ray dome that protects the antenna. And inside of the cabin, uh, there are, uh, we have two wireless access points. There's one uh, actually right where we're standing right now, and there's one um, in the back. And, uh, and how it works is that when you're uh, sitting in your seat and surfing, uh, the signals are sent up to the wireless access point. It's kind of like a router that you have in your house. The signal is sent to a satellite and from there to the ground. And then it's returned back up to the flying aircraft. But airlines have always been at pains in the past to control the use of electronic devices on board, saying it could interfere with the plane's navigation system. So what's different now? Both uh, American aviation authorities and European aviation authorities have uh, have done severe uh, electromagnetic testings for uh, several years in order to make sure that uh, this Wi-Fi system does not interfere with our uh, aircraft operational systems and our navigational systems. So uh, it is safe. Once you reach an altitude of 10,000 feet, you can turn your mobile device on, even if it's, uh, if it's a uh, cell phone or an iPad or a, a laptop. But the same rules still apply uh, concerning uh, the GSM uh, system. You cannot use your uh, cell phone connected through the GSM system uh, while surfing on board. But it's not only passengers who are benefiting from advances in satellite technology. 
pilots already know about the increasing influence satellites are having on aerial navigation. We went to Katowice in Poland to watch some experimental landing approaches guided by the European Geostationary Navigation Overlay Service, or EGNOS, that's now been officially launched by European authorities. The existing landing system relies on very expensive ground-based equipment to guide aircraft safely to the runway in low visibility. But this light plane, a Piper Seneca, can make precision approaches without any of that ground infrastructure. Using EGNOS satellite signals, it can land in poor visibility at even the smallest or most remote airport that were previously off-limits to instrumental navigation. It uses signals coming from GPS satellites and in the future from the European Galileo constellation. A network of ground stations gathers the signals and improves their accuracy from a 10-meter margin of error to less than a meter. They are then relayed back to the aircraft from a separate network of geostationary satellites. EGNOS provides a significant contribution in the aviation community and particularly for the approach phase of flights, it provides vertical guidance which enhances safety. The GPS technology used in everyday life provides a positioning service, but the aviation community needs a better accuracy and integrity requirements because it is a safety critical application. In that, EGNOS helps because with its geostationary satellites, it provides for better accuracy and integrity. The EGNOS system can also create tailor-made approaches for certain airports that have specific constraints. Aircraft can make approaches, for instance, avoiding noise-sensitive areas. It's a question of air safety meeting environmental protection.